Right, I've got the radio unplugged and I'm just going to disconnect the little light bulb that I've uh, got across there. Uh, so we'll, oops, sorry, I'll we'll take that away just for the moment and I'll just bridge down there with a little bit of wire. I'll just bridge in from the uh, other end of the fuse holder to the end of this fuse. As I say this this isn't good practice. Um, but it's better than not having a fuse at all. If I had uh, another fuse holder I'd put it in. I've uh, now got the meter connected across uh, the output of the choke and uh, we'll be looking at DC volts. I've uh, removed the um, the lamp so now we're just relying on the fuse uh, that I've got in there for protection and um, the other side of the meter is across to ground. If I can find the mains plug uh, we'll plug it in and this is the first time the radio is going on at full volts so I was anticipating something a bit lower than that but there's no load on it yet um, let me just double check that that looks high switch that off Oh, wow. Well, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit tickled pink there. I, uh, <laughs> I'm going through the dial, I don't even know what frequency range I'm on. Well. The oscillator. Well, that's... Uh, get me on there. Um, I didn't expect that. I expected a lot more hassle. Um, but uh, there you go. That's the, uh, the setup. I hope I'm good in it. Um, I'm very pleased uh, f particularly for my friend Harry because that's really as far as I want to go with uh, this bit of equipment. Because I'll just turn the gain down. Um, because all I really want to do is um, be able to sell it as a working equipment that needs renovation. Um, so, wow. <laughs> okay, well I just want to check things around. What I will do is measure the HT current now I'm on full voltage before I do anything else. I'll just plug it in. and I've just killed the fuse. Now why should it do that? So why should it have done that? Um, I guess there's a capacitor somewhere that's uh, gone or uh, well that's uh, that was a 500 milliamp fuse. But, um, right so some more investigation work see what's going on. Well I've had a quick meter around and I can't find anything that's uh, different to what it was before. They are quick blow fuses um, so I am simply going to try it again. Now I've got the meter in place to read current. We'll switch it on. Pilot lights are on. No sign of current. Ah. 
After checking around again, I concluded that there was no fault and that the fuse had blown due to the inrush current into the mains transformer. It's rather a large mains transformer and in fact I blew several uh, 500 milliamp fuses uh, during the course of testing and um, I put a 1 amp fuse in which is the, the recommended fuse and uh, there is no further problem. But, uh, a bit worrying but I, I'm glad it didn't blow the uh, the very first time I switched it on. Well, 120 milliamps, so um, I don't know why that fuse uh, blew. Uh, so they are quick blow fuses, but uh, they're a couple of hundred milliamps. So, um, phew, uh, <laughs> I can breathe again. Okay, so that's what I wanted uh, to, to see was the, uh, the 120 milliamps uh, there. I think what I'll do next is put a decent aerial on it and uh, have a play. Blue fuse the second time I switched it on. Oh no! <laughs> um, You're pushing your luck, aren't you? Well, yes. <laughs> but uh, I shall post it all on uh, YouTube because it's all <laughs> it's real. Warts and all. Um, what I was setting out to do with this video is uh, just sort of go through the repair and uh, let you see warts and all. Um, I've taken out the meter now. Um, I say I wanted to sort of do it live, but uh, what I didn't get on camera was me just getting a belt off the um, capacitors here. And uh, I'll zoom in and uh, explain how and why I managed to do that. Hopefully you get that. <clears throat> this is the choke uh, that I've uh, put in place and I broke the line to put the meter in in series uh, with the, uh, the output of that choke. Then when I switched the equipment off I switched off the standby switch which is here. Uh, so the HT load is removed off those capacitors. I then switched off this switch which takes away the energy to that. So it left the uh, uh, capacitor um, charged and uh, when I uh, put the little terminal block back on uh, I just got a little uh, a little tingle. Uh, it was a second or two but um, after I'd switched off so uh, hopefully that capacitor or unfortunately that capacitor must be leaking a, a little bit to have uh, taken the voltage away um, but what a stupid mistake to make as I say nearly caught it on camera but I don't want to do that too often but it's typical you know I've been messing about with these things for a long time and yet I fell for something as simple as that um, so uh, no discharge resistors uh, on there um, so uh, servicing this sort of equipment with that sort of switch in it uh, you can put yourself in a position where you uh, leave that capacitor charged up um, anyway just thought that was that was interesting and, uh, and not too painful as it happened hi there and uh, if you've been uh, watching uh, since I started to look at this radio then um, I've uh, achieved what I set out to achieve I wanted to get this radio into uh, a condition where I knew that everything was working not restoring it simply uh, repairing it um, so now it'll be uh, a lovely project for somebody to restore <laughs> Thank you. 